Hello everybody and welcome back to another episode of Should You Play. This week we're talking about Battlefield 1. To preface this, uh, with Battlefield 5 trailer being announced recently, the hype being very much real, I thought it only appropriate to review the pros and cons of its direct predecessor. Uh, I've personally logged hundreds of hours into Battlefield 4 and even more into Battlefield 3, but I didn't get into Battlefield 1 until recently and I've enjoyed it since my purchase. Here's to Battlefield 5 being even better. Let's get started with the gameplay. As with all Battlefield games, the multiplayer is its main focus, but the campaign is what I found to be its main breadwinner. There are five different campaigns to play, each one showing off a different side to the war to end all wars. You can play in Arabia against the Ottoman Empire, storm the beaches of Gallipoli, fly over the west as a pilot, and do so much more. Multiplayer, however, is what everyone wants to hear about, and it doesn't let you down. The class creation is well designed and optimized for what existed in World War I. The visuals are absolutely beautiful. As I ran the game on a PC with more than qualified specs, I found a little bit of frame lag occasionally, so optimization still may land a little short. However, the overall aesthetics of the war zones you constantly find yourself in are absolutely incredible, tonal, and something you can stop and appreciate midway through slaughtering an entire squad. It's a gorgeous game and you notice it at every single turn. Battlefield 1 added what has quickly become my favorite vehicle in any iteration of the series. Riding a horse into battle feels so fierce that it puts your mindset into a completely different place than sniping in a tank or flying a bomber plane. You are a soldier, and the new maps really represent that. Playing on Monte Grappa is a vertical nightmare, where rocks are people and people are certain death. Amiens is so close counters that every second you're alive is filled with anxiety and stress. What I believe to be Battlefield 1's best feature, however, is the emotions its levels fill you with. The landscapes are beautifully concocted and it shows. My favorite points are the sound design. The sound design is what I think to be best of any game in the series. In my experiences, Battlefield 3 and 4 both had ricochet noises, footprint sound cues, and accurate gun sounds, but Battlefield 1's game music has a Zimmerman feel to it. The sound completely enthralls you into the depths of the Great War and you stay trapped in your mind for hours after you disconnect and walk away. We have lost objective <laughs> My least favorite points in this game are snipers. The only genuine complaint I have on Battlefield 1 is its dedication to snipers and the elitism of the sniper class. Snipers are on every single map and can genuinely control the pace of the battle if you let them. So be careful of a sniper and be careful that your head isn't in their crosshairs because it will happen and it will happen a lot. You will enjoy this game if you've liked the past Battlefield games and you'd like to refresh on your skills before entering the combat of Battlefield 5. Seeing as how the fifth iteration will be in World War II, the weapons that you are going to be using are more likely going to be like those in Battlefield 1 and the same goes for vehicles and customization trees. You should avoid this, however, if you're a fast-paced shooter kind of person. Battlefield 1's Team Deathmatch mode is one that I haven't absolutely adored, but I still enjoy playing. If you're looking for a type of game where Team Deathmatch is your thing, then you should just wait for the release of Black Ops 4 or get Black Ops 2, because Battlefield 1 is not designed around Deathmatch modes. Should you play it? I say yes, if you're a fan of any of the past Battlefield games, it will not let you down, and because of the announcement of Battlefield 5, the price has gone down significantly, so it's a great time to purchase and get into it. Join us again next time for our next Should You Play, and in the meantime, if you'd like to keep up to date on our new videos, please don't forget to subscribe down below. Also, if you'd really like to support us and make these videos even better, become a patron on our Patreon page. You can get all kinds of really cool TMS swag. And we'll even send you a nice little customized thank you message. And join us next time for Should You Play.